Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 22nd April 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader of Superior Profit, a company registered in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. However, if you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how to invest profitably using superior profit way you may go to our website and visit the about menu let us start with the disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on superior profits trading system the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at key technical analysis of some key markets, including oil, gold, global indices and few forex symbols then we'll move to us market and look at spy qqq dia before going into broad market sector industry analysis using graphs and heat map and ranking table we'll review some of the new topics posted in trade ideas or quiz playground graduates club in our traders community since our last class and we will look into possible trades for the coming week. If we have time, we will discuss a few of the factors that I look into for identifying strong fundamental companies for long-term investment. Q&A is throughout the session. You may use the Q&A panel to ask me question anytime during the session. Let's now start with the commodity market. Let's start with gold. Gold is in an uptrend. It has higher high and higher low in the daily chart. And in the weekly chart also it is going up with backdrop candle color bullish that is cyan. Because it is already very close to upper boundary and it also has a indecision candle on Friday with long upper and lower tail relative to the body. We are not considering any entry position into gold right now. Now in superior profit way, we don't like to enter trade when it is already close to the upper boundary. So it sometimes happens that if a stock or instrument like gold goes to the upper boundary and then continues to go up hugging the upper boundary or above upper boundary, then we miss a chance of entering that trade. Following standard superior profit, therefore, sometimes leads us not to participate in a move that goes up strongly all the way without pulling back to this value area. So sometimes a trader who is observing the instrument regularly may be able to take a trade when it pulls back and goes up again, making a recent low. Enter a go with flow long trade even though it is already close to upper boundary. However, that is not the standard superior profit way and therefore I don't discuss that in our classes. I suggest people not to do that also unless they see a pattern of the stock or the ETF regularly going above upper boundary and continuing to go up at the upper boundary. If that is a regular pattern, then one may consider entering long at a recent low like at this point however 
if the stock continues to go to upper boundary pulls back goes to upper boundary pulls back then i suggest we wait for the pullback and enter the trade at the value area so at the right edge in any case we don't have any trade opportunity in gold let's look at us oil in the last class we discussed that there was a possibility for price to go up hit the memory resistance line which was already there both in weekly and daily chart and price may pull back price didn't quite hit the memory resistance that was existing at that time that is the upper line however price started pulling back a trader who was watching regularly might enter a short trade on the stretch release signal with a low risk stop being just above the memory resistance line and initial profit target near value area so he would have exited partial profit at value area and continue to hold the remaining position till now for a very profitable trade this is another example again where the memory resistance worked very well and that is why we take those levels seriously both for entering trades as well as for exiting trades so for people who entered long in oil around this low based on our discussion in weekly the market roundup they might have exited half profit along the way in value area and for the remaining profit remaining position as price was approaching the memory resistance they would have tightened stop using q protection signal and would have exited by protecting profit somewhere at this level a relevant discussion is what to do when a short signal comes when somebody is already in a long position superior profit guideline is that if a short signal valid short setup comes up when somebody is already holding a long position then one must exit the long position he may or may not enter the short trade however if a valid short short signal comes one must exit any remaining long position in superior profit way let's now move to some global market so for that we'll go to meta stock by the way for uh, oil uso at the right edge it is already overextended it has fallen a lot it is showing the stretch signals the magenta and red dots it is overextended and therefore we are not going to enter any trade right now our next trade opportunity may come if price comes to the support memory and start bouncing up from there okay now we move to meta star and this is nifty nifty index future the broad market index future for us for india market we had discussed earlier that if price goes to this upper boundary shows some bearish sign then people may start exiting any long position they were holding and consider taking short since the bearish headwind came price couldn't go above the high made that made by that headwind it has created a high watermark level now price is below that on friday price went below the two direction line standard and fast direction line the flow candle color turned bearish that is magenta strictly speaking it is still not in downtrend because it is not showing lower high lower low the last high we had is a higher high and the lows are approximately at the same level so we will not be able to take any go with flow short trade right now our next trade opportunity could be if price go up little bit and tilts down thereby creating a lower high and then we could anticipate a lower low and enter a short trade if we get a bearish flow magenta color candle at that point 
so we may keep watching nifty to see if it gives us that trade opportunity or not the other possibility could be for nifty to go up just go above the high watermark level and come back down giving us a false upside breakout and if that is accompanied by a stretch release signal then we might take a sideways sideways market box short trade setup now let's move into some forex symbol let's look at sing dollar earlier when price was at the very slow direction line white line we discussed that we will not be entering any trade at that point we will be waiting for price to go up and then till down which happened at this point price went down from the yellow slow direction line with a bear release signal so a forex trader could have used that signal to enter a swing short trade and then book profit within one day at the right edge price is again moving in very narrow range along the white direction line so we will not be looking for any trade right now it is also moving inside a triangle pattern bounded by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom so unless price breaks out of that we will not be looking for any trade right now let's look at few other symbols let's look at gbp usd gbp usb made a low at this point went up a bearish headwind appeared after that price pulled back to value area gave a cyan candle at value area and that could be a go with flow long trade opportunity by that time price already had a higher high and higher low so when this cyan candle color came it met all the requirements on daily chart for a go with flow long trade stop will be just below the recent low and target will be at the upper boundary which was hit in five working days so that was a profitable go with flow long opportunity in gbp usd now i would like to highlight this candle also this is also a sign candle color and by the time price came here it was also having higher high and higher low however this sign candle is not at, as attractive as the second sign candle because for this sign candle the reward risk ratio is not attractive enough target will be around this level upper boundary stop will be just below recent low and the entry price will be at the close of the sign candle so for the first sign candle after it made higher high the reward risk ratio was not very attractive now let's see if still somebody entered the trade it would get stopped out or not for that we will move to the hop off template and we see that if we use the hop off q protection signal as stop loss then we will not get stopped out on the cyan candle our entry price again will be at the close of the candle target will be at the upper direction upper boundary line and stop following the q protection signal will be this magenta series of dots that is the q protection signal and if we followed that that will not get stopped out and again price will hit our target after a couple of days this again shows that q protection signal draws the stop loss at a safe distance away from the price close not so far away that we lose a lot of money but sufficiently away so that it doesn't get whipsawed easily so i always suggest using the q protection signal for placing your stop and if you see that the reward risk ratio is not attractive then you may not decide to enter that trade 
so if we now again look at the chart using hop up template clearly we see that the reward risk is not attractive for this cyan candle entry the risk will be this height and the reward will be much smaller height compare that to the second cyan candle which is also a bullish flow candle our stop will be at the same level entries at the close of the candle and our price target will be at the upper boundary and in this case we can clearly see that our profit target is higher than the risk taken in the trade and those are the points that we would like to use to enter a go with flow long trade now if you look back at the checklist the unambiguous checklist for each of the trade setups the more you see all of these fine points you will realize that the checklist has been prepared with a lot of consideration in mind to allow us to take only the safe trades safe trades meaning where more and more signals are aligned with our trade both in terms of daily and weekly chart and also where reward risk ratio is attractive enough if we look to the right edge of gbp usd it is already at upper boundary it is also overstretched as we can see from the stretch signals that's the dots green dots on top of the candle so we will not be looking for any long opportunity right now on top of that price is also at the declining very slow wide direction line which has a tendency to act as a resistance so we are not looking for any long entry right now and because it is in an uptrend unless a headwind signal comes we are not expecting any short trade it can also give us a box trade setup because i see there was a high watermark level coming back from december last year which was the level where approximately the level where a bearish headwind had also appeared earlier so if price at the right right edge turns down with a bear release signal we might consider taking a box trade and quickly book profit why i say book profit quickly because it seems to be in strong uptrend right now again if we take such a short trade opportunity we should make sure that our reward risk is attractive considering value area as our profit target so we may wait for that signal right now we have no trade to take in gbp usd let's look at australian dollar australian dollar had a very nice short trade setup here where it bounced down from pre existing memory line come from far behind had a bear release signal also that turned out to be a very profitable trade subsequent trade opportunity was a go with flow short opportunity on this magenta candle we will not be taking any trade on this magenta candle because price was still in uptrend but when price came to the second magenta candle we already had a lower high and we could anticipate a lower low coming and take a go with flow short trade here that also turned out to be a very profitable trade at the right edge of the chart it is inside a triangle pattern bounded by resistance memory at the top support memory at the bottom so we will not be considering taking any trade right now it is also in an area where all the four direction lines are coming together it doesn't happen often usually our trades are based on two direction lines for swing trading the cyan and magenta lines and sometimes we see a third line coming together all the four lines coming together is not very common so if that happens and then price moves in one direction then we will have a special case where all the four direction lines may be aligned to the trade's direction and we will be able to take the trade little more confidently in superior profit way whether we are more confident or not meaning whether a few more signals are aligned to the trade or not we always manage our risk and stick to equal risk taking in each of our trades 
one way is to use say two percent of your total capital and risk in each stock trade that is one thing that many of our traders follow and whether we are more confident or not we will not like to risk more in a particular trade let's look at australian index and enamul asked us to look at is so let's look at that so here price was going up strongly and then we saw a bearish headwind appear i don't know how the weekly chart was at that time but whether weekly was aligned or not if somebody was holding a long position maybe based on a box long trade taken using this bull release signal if somebody was holding that long position then partial profit must have been booked when the watermark high was hit and then maybe further position could be closed at the upper boundary line and if somebody was still holding some position when the headwind bearish signal appeared one would be cautious and then protect the profit by using the q protection stop and then somebody could also take a bearish headwind signal trade provided the weekly was also aligned which also turned out to be a profitable trade so when a bearish headwind appears we are always cautious about any long position and may consider taking a short position as well at the right edge of the chart it has formed a lower low already so if next week it turns down with a magenta flow candle color with a reward risk ratio that is attractive then one might consider taking a go with flow short trade right now there is no trade opportunity the other possibility could be that price goes up to this watermark high level created by the bearish headwind then tilts down at that point with a bear release signal giving us a possible box short trade candidate so that was our analysis of few commodities nifty india market and number of forex symbols and australia index let's now move to us market Okay, I am looking at the Q and A panel. We we'll look at GM also. As Sean asked, for Bank Nifty index, the equivalent in USA market will be uh, some some index like financial ETF, maybe uh, XLF. XLF. It's a financial SPDR, and there may be other ETFs also. I think FAS is another one. There may be others. So you may use those let's go to the us market with analysis of the three broad market etfs spy start with spy s p 500 in the weekly chart the bearish headwind came sorry the bear release came and since then price is going down with backdrop color bearish that is magenta in the daily chart after the very headwind came price couldn't go up to that high level anymore it was already in downtrend and several flow magenta color bearish flow magenta color candle appeared at the right edge of the chart price is inside a triangle pattern bounded by resistance memory at the top support memory at the bottom and price is resting on the yellow direction line which is also at the same point where cyan and magenta direction lines are coming together so we have no trade opportunity right now we'll wait for price to break out of the triangle pattern and then see what trade setup appears after that as we just saw in another symbol the four direction lines came together and i mentioned sometimes three lines come together four coming together is rare in this case three of the direction lines are coming together but not the fourth one the white direction line is still far away let's look at dia dia in the daily chart 
is also in a downtrend and as we are discussing in several of the market roundups after the bearish headwind it couldn't go up to that high anymore at the right edge of the chart price is moving in narrow range similar to spy and all the three direction lines cyan magenta and yellow are coming together we have no trade signal at this point the weekly chart is bearish for swing trading that is the flow color backdrop color is magenta bearish let's look at qqq which has been the strongest of the three ats for a long time and it continues to be long the weekly candle color is bearish though price went up last week in the daily chart unlike spy and dia price went up significantly maybe breaking one watermark level and approaching the highest watermark level if we look in little bit more detail we say on friday price actually went down with high activity a bear release signal came though the candle traffic color is bullish and the candle shape is also bullish so there are some bullish signals some bearish signals we will not be able to take any trade at the right edge relative performance is very strong relative to s p 500 so here our expected trade could be price to break out of the high watermark level and come down with a bear daily signal giving us a box short trade opportunity just like it gave earlier which turned out to be a profitable trade let's now move into broad market sector and industry analysis i have prepared the graphs for that already so let me move to that every week we look at the broad market in terms of nasdaq composite index on the left hand side and nyse composite index on the right hand side both using weekly time interval because it is using weekly time interval this is relevant for long term investing it is not appropriate to use this for short term investing and certainly not for day trading the markets broad markets continue to be in an uptrend in the weekly time interval though for the past several weeks the NYSE composite index came down somewhat Nasdaq didn't it is more or less flat over last few months NYSE seems weaker however both are still in uptrend with higher high and higher low in the weekly time interval the internals continue to be weak we look at three internals new high low the number of stocks making new high minus those making new lows advanced decline number of stocks advancing minus those declining and up down volume volume of all the stocks going up minus volume of all the stocks going down though the indices themselves are going up strongly making higher high we see that in terms of the internals they are not able to make higher high instead they are making lower high for all of the internals that's why we say that the internals continue to be weak where while the indices remain in uptrend if we look specifically at the week that just passed we see that new high low is above zero that is positive and it went up for both nasdaq and nice and for the other four internals they went up slightly but all of them remained below zero that is negative so for the past week we say that the broad market internals were mixed or neutral the internals continue to be weak while the indices continue to be in an uptrend 
so market is not displaying in terms of this weekly broad market internals uh, in a bearish signal yet if it comes if it comes we will be able to observe it both in the etfs indexes as well as the internals but it hasn't come yet we are not predicting in superior profit way we don't predict what will happen but whatever happens we try to take advantage of that and we tend to get early signal of what is going to happen by looking at this broad market internal and also at signals like headwind signal bear release etc let's move to sector and industry analysis every week we look at broad market sector analysis in terms of looking at the 10 sectors across three time periods the red bar indicates the result or performance percentage gain or loss over last five days the blue bar five days prior to that and green bar 10 days prior to the blue bar together they constitute 20 days or about one month of performance we see that in the week that just passed most of the sectors ended in the positive the red bar came to the right hand side this is in contrast to what happened last week in the last week most of the sectors ended in in the negative so this is again showing the flip-flop in the market only two sectors now ended in the negative one is utilities which is a defensive sector and the other is energy probably energy's downfall was related to the oil commodity coming down let's go to industry analysis We are looking at the 10 best performing industries over last five days. We see there is some simil there is some similarity. There are two real estate related industries in the best performing industry groups and two metal related industry groups. And we also see the percentage gain of the best performing industries are quite high, 4% upward whereas we will see that the declining industries decline by a lower percentage so this is a list of the 10 worst performing industries and here we see the declines are in the range of two percentage or so lower than the advancing industries which went up by four percent plus we see gold mining and mining came among the worst performing industries though these were best performers last week and renewable energy equipment which was ranking one the best performing industry of all last week has now come in one of the worst performing industries so all these are showing continued flip-flop in the industry groups and the sectors as well we also look at the industries with biggest rank improvement and we see aluminium and iron and steel had big rank improvement this week also industrial metal mining transported services and banks interestingly all of these which had very big rank improvement were among the worst performing industries in the previous week again displaying the flip-flop in the industry groups and if we look at the industries with biggest rank decline we see all these industry groups renewable energy a number of rates mortgage finance they have come among the biggest rank declines how far they were the among the best performing industries last week again displaying the flip flop Okay, there is a question on the industry group home construction in Metastock. Uh, the industry group analysis that we do here doesn't use, um, I'll have to look up the code for that. It, it, the system is automated. I don't remember the code offhand. 
So Enamul, I may uh, reply to your question after the class. His question was, what is the code for the home construction industry group? I'll find it out after the class and send to you. So that was our review of the broad market sector and industry groups using graphs. Let's now look at the heat map and ranking ranking table for this. For that, we'll go to our website under sector and industry group. We rank the 10 sectors and 160 industry groups and apply a heat map table to that. If we look at the sectors, the industrials have become the top performing one. Energy became the bottom performing with rank 10. Utilities has declined this week a defensive sector, telecom has also declined. Though if I remember correctly, I think last week telecom and utilities went up, but this week they turned down, or utilities turned down actually. And they are among the worst performing sectors now. To find trading opportunity, we may look into the industry ranking table to pinpoint the exact industry group where we are looking for trade opportunities. Now because there is visible flip-flop among the industry groups going up one week going down next week, at these times it is easier or more appropriate look at the monthly trend to see whether the industry groups are going up or down properly and then take a trade according to that. So you can always click here to download this ranking and heat map table and sort it by the one month column to look for trading opportunities. I have downloaded it already and let me open that. This is the same industry analysis heat map and ranking table but now I have removed hidden the first two columns that is five day and 10 day performance and sorted it by the one month ranking. And now we are what we are looking for is industry groups which were weak earlier magenta color and turning cyan that is stronger. So electronic office equipment is one of them. Retail rates is also one of them which was magenta earlier and we can see now clearly over one month period there is a big rank improvement in both electronic office equipment and retail rate. So we will be looking for long opportunities in such industry groups and you can find several such industry groups mining airlines. We will not look at gold mining because it was magenta turn cyan magenta cyan again it is showing flip flop in the monthly interval also. Instead we look for those which were steadily magenta for a while and turning cyan now for long opportunities. If you look for tobacco, uh, why I came to tobacco because Enamul asked about some tobacco companies and I already observed before when I was doing my analysis that it was cyan for long time and now turning magenta. So we will not be looking for taking long opportunities in tobacco industry groups right now. We will only take short opportunities and if we had long position we will be careful to protect its profit. However the short opportunities will be taken only if there is a valid Q trade setup. So we looked at some industry groups where we could look for long opportunity. Tobacco is one where we could look for short. And if I look for apparel, this is one also where we could look for long opportunity. We can see there is a steady progress from magenta to cyan color as the rank is improving. And in last one month, the rank improved from 113 to 57. 
so we could look for long opportunities in apparel retailers some of them already went up some may be on the way of going up that is how we use the industry and sector and broad market analysis and combine them with Q technical analysis to align more and more edges to our trades favor let's now move to our traders community in look for some trades that were shared since our last class okay in a home, home construction is 131 so let me just go back to home construction for one minute yes this is also a good good selection from enamel it was steadily cyan for quite long time and now turning magenta in the monthly interval also we see it dropped from 2 to 78 so that is a big drop and in fact if we are watching this table regularly then we were already looking for possible short trades and there, there were some interesting moves in stocks in this industry group we may look at that okay so please remember i will come back to stocks in all these industry groups that you mentioned and the exact ticker symbols let's look at the community by the way this meeting place forum i set it up for the graduates club to share their personal information if they would like to let others know about them so i myself started by posting that i am in nc usa now feel free to do the same share pictures etc this is open to all the graduate club members so let's look at pki this is a stock that i shared on april 21 i observed that market went up however many of the companies in this industry group i think healthcare instrumentation industry group they went down and pki also went down that was 20th april on 20th april and on the line chart weekly line chart i saw that price is overextended and showing a bear release signal it was moving sideways earlier then price broke out then tilted down so if it goes down further it may give us false upside breakout already this watermark level was broken price went up and came back again there are few more watermarks they, that may be broken there is a support memory line around 55 price point so even if price comes to that level we'll have a profitable swing trade opportunity because this is looking at a weekly chart in daily chart uh, is short move in the weekly chart will give us a profitable swing trade on daily chart looking at the at a glance template where we look at weekly chart on the left hand side using backdrop can backdrop template and right hand side hop on template on daily chart we see now clearly that it has already created a false upside breakout price tried to go up above the high watermark level where a bearish headwind had earlier come price dropped from there that headwind created a watermark level now price went above that couldn't stay above came down with a bear release signal so the weekly was telling that we are able to take a short trade relative performance was also weak in the daily chart there was also a bearish headwind since then price couldn't go up at the right edge we have a resistance memory price went to that at this yellow candle and then tilted down with a bearish flow magenta color candle relative performance is weak the stop is very narrow and initial profit target might be the ascending yellow line that would also give an attractive reward risk ratio 
I also observed that the activity was high on this day when price came down from memory resistance. So I shared it as a potential go with flow short candidate. It has neither hit the target or the stop. So this trade is still underway. Now let me ask you looking at this chart, the few charts, do you think that this was an appropriate go with flow short candidate? There were enough signals in your opinion. Please type your answer in the Q&A. Yes, yes, I think so. Because here again, I looked at the industry or the peers of this company and looked at multiple charts. There were enough very signals. So whatever be the result, whether it stops out or it hits the target, we'll consider it as a superior profit trade. Let's look at Victoria's Secret, which is a, owned by a company called LB. L Brands. Remember, Apparel Industry Group was doing well. Apparel Industry Group was doing well. And th th this snapshot was during the week. At the end of the week, we saw that Apparel strengthened further. So Apparel Industry Group was doing well. And at that time, I noticed this is the at a glance chart. LB has fallen a lot. It created a very bullish shaped candle with long lower tail. On the day, it also had extreme high activity on the week. On the that week, this is a weekly chart using backdrop template. In that week, it had reverse price creating a bullish shape candle with extreme high activity that was bullish signal and since then price is going up with backdrop color cyan that is bullish at the right edge it had displayed a bull release signal in the daily chart price came down created a bullish headwind however price fell again and then went back and then went back inside the watermark level and above the bullish headwind price level. So that created a fake downside breakout at the right edge of the chart. Candle color was cyan. This was strictly speaking not a go with flow long candidate because there is no higher high higher low. However, it looked like a possible long trade at the bottom both as a swing trade as well as a potential long-term investment so I shared this trade the day I shared it next day next day in Thomson Reuters the news came out that apparel retailers rise after JP Morgan's back to school comments However, we were already long. Some of us were already long based on the post I shared or they might have done their own analysis. So using Q charts and the industry ranking table, we could anticipate the move and enter here for this case one day earlier than the actual news came out. Let's look at LB today. Since the trade was posted, it actually went up enough. In fact, the very next day, price went up at the high point more than 3%. So that was a significant profit gain within one day. And for swing trade, for highly liquid stocks like LB, we may expect a profit of 2.5, 3.5 percentage like that and one might have booked some profit at that point already and it is still uh, slightly away from the upper boundary and the descending memory line descending yellow direction line on friday the candle shape is bullish traffic light continues to be bullish green so i'm expecting it to hit the upper boundary in any case uh, on monday also So if you look at this pattern, this is not the only trade you will see that I shared. 
where it, it was not exactly a go through long candidate but price came back came down a lot and then started going up with a bullish signal and based on that we took the long trade could be a swing trade could be also a long term investment let's look at this other trade i shared on a bearish day I think this was Alexian. On this day, 13th April. Okay. 13th April was more than one week ago, but let's look at that. If we see the sonar, the dashboard from Trade Station Q sonar, we see that there were many many magenta colors under the column Q go with flow entry so there were many short potential very straight potential than long however on the same day I looked up this chart Alexian in the line chart weekly interval it has fall it had fallen a lot but then price created a memory support line and at the right edge it had displayed bull release signal there was a resistance memory at around 125 price level but it was still long distance away from the current price 118.39 at that time so it could give us a profitable swing trade and if price continued to go up we could have a profitable long term investment as well this was how the at a glance looked like at that time. Do you think it was a good setup for a long trade? You can type your answer in the Q&A panel while I explain my rationale. In the weekly chart, price came down, but then price was being supported by support memory. Bull release had come. Flow color, sorry, backdrop color had turned neutral, magenta. In the daily chart, using clear template, we can see watermark, watermark level was formed. Price tried to go below that, but that went back up with a very strong bullish candle and bull release signal. The candle shape was bullish and candle traffic light color was also bullish. So I decided to take a trade with a stop just below the recent low and because there was a resistance memory I decided to book profit if price hit the memory resistance line. Remember we are always careful about memory resistance lines and if price hits them we always try to book profit. In this case you can see the reward was less than risk but looking at the overall weekly daily charts, I decided to take a trade in this case. So in superior profit way, we don't need always reward to be higher than risk. Slightly less is also okay, provided more and more signals, both technical as well as industry wise are aligned in favor of the trade. That is my approach anyway. And using that, I decided to take this trade. And I had analyzed LX, LXN was in biotech industry group, which was strengthening over the last 10, five, 10 days and 5 days at that time. The trade was shared on this day, this long cyan color candle. And in 3 trading days, it hit the up memory resistance line and I booked profit at that time. If we have a memory resistance for a long trade, we should always book some profit at that point because memory resistance often push price down. So I book profit anyway. And let's look at ALXN after that. When I book profit, I had shared the trade into the community with follow-up comment. If we look at LXN now, we see the memory resistance is broken now, but price come back down from there interest station if we go to clean chart 
then we can actually see where the memory resistance was broken this was the green candle that broke the memory resistance that is why today we cannot see it anymore and then price came down from there for two days that is why i keep on saying that when we take a trade we always consider the memory resistance as our initial target if there is any or the upper boundary for a long trade so in this case it was good to book profit at the memory resistance and not wait for it to go to the next resistance level so at the right edge of the chart price has come down little bit now if price goes back up then it will create a higher low it already has kind of higher high so if we have a cyan candle next week then it will give a go with flow long trade setup provided the weekly also is aligned with that right now weekly is not aligned it has the backdrop color of magenta for go with flow long setup we need a backdrop color of cyan the other possible trade could be price to go back down to the memory resistance line maybe go below it and come back above it by giving us a false downside breakout if it is accompanied by high activity and a bull release signal then we could to take a box trade or if it is bouncing up from the memory support line it could give us a bounce trade so we could look for all the three setups uh, in this stock now uh, let me look at the last stock for today from the community that is singtel it's a singapore based large telecom operator though it is based in singapore they have investment in many many countries including australia india many asean countries southeast asian nations is the main telco operator in singapore and i thought uh, i will share how to identify some of the long term investments based on fundamental so i shared some of that data here and that's why i am going to look at that now for long term investment we are looking for stocks that are robust you can say kind of blue chip or in strong industry well known companies at the same time we look for those companies to fall so because the companies have fallen a lot when we are looking to buy them we don't expect on all the fundamentals to be strong if all the fundamentals are strong they wouldn't have fallen anyway this is in contrast to breakout traders for example you can say the ibd kind of investors investors business daily who try to trade at the break up at the high point and for ibd trades they are all fundamentally very robust they classify the groups into 1 2 3 and they take trades in the strongest group strongest company those are essentially buying at the top of a move but we prefer in superior profit to buy at the bottom of a move both for long term and swing trade thereby we have a much better reward risk ratio on the other hand because we are waiting for a stock how far strong it is fundamentally to fall down we don't expect all the fundamentals to be great so earnings might have been poor resulting in the stock to go down or some other factor however we we look at fundamentals anyway how do we do that we compare the stock with its peer group sometimes telecom is out of favor so telecom stocks may fall all together and if there are multiple telecom operators in the country we are considering to trade we can compare them and try to find the strongest among them in terms of technical as well as fundamental and then make a judgment call which one looks best to us and take a long trade for long term investment so i did the same thing for singtel i looked at singtel and two of its competitors mobile one and star hub in singapore 
let's start with the chart of mobile one this is the at a glance chart weekly backdrop on the left hand side daily hop on on the right hand side we see that at the right edge price is resting at the support memory line in daily also it is resting at the support memory line but it recently dropped that was just after the earnings result so m1 announced earning result and after that price dropped and hit the memory support line at that point this was mobile one and this is star hub the other operator this also dropped a lot created a watermark level and moving kind of sideways in the weekly backdrop template in the hop on price closed below the memory support it is still above the lowest watermark level so price might come to watermark level and go back up and we will still consider that it is holding the price at this low so star hub like m1 dropped a lot and we can say stabilizing as seen from at a glance template if we look at singtel it also dropped tried to go back up in the weekly backdrop template came back down at the right edge it was resting right on top of the memory support line in the daily also it was supporting it was supported by two memory support line and on the day of my analysis it bounced up from the memory support it was an intraday chart i don't know how the activity turned out but it did bounce up with a strong bullish shape candle so i thought in terms of the at a glance template singtel looked stronger than the other two and size wise singtel is much bigger than mobile one and star hub that was the technical analysis of the individual charts now if i look at the industry and here because the company is based in singapore i looked at asia pacific telecom services index and integrated telecom services index instead of looking as at the uh, ranking heat map table that is posted on our side that is based on mostly us indices because i use icon or zenith i have access to the global indices and therefore i could compare singtel with the local market indices and i saw the yellow line singtel went up came back down and it is being supported at memory level as we saw in q chart and the same for the other two instruments shown here the telecom services index and integrated telecom services index all of them came down and seems to be supported and slightly gradually going up so these are the points we would like to initiate a long trade for long term investment in a blue chip company so i looked at the individual stock its peers in terms of q technical analysis in the in terms of industry i compared singtel with its industry group and then looked at the industry group with q chart as well backdrop template and i saw that it is in downtrend but it is being supported by memory so it it was possible that price will bounce up from one of this memory levels and then i looked at some of the fundamental data when i buy for long term investment i try to look for price to be at a level where significant accumulation is happening so this is a chart of volume at price level the bars at the right hand side display the volume or transactions activity that is taking place at different price levels so i can see very large amount of transaction has taken place at the current price level of 3.9 to 3.8 so to me that represents accumulation because if it was large players selling then price should have dropped how to read this chart is that every time price comes to this level 3839 more and more people uh, are buying and therefore more and more people are selling but because price is not dropping so i anticipate that this may be time for the price to go up and it is likely that it will have some resistance at 39310 where we have a declining trend line in q chart 
so we could book some profit quickly at that point or keep a close eye if it breaks up and continues to go up then it may go up to 4.2 4.3 level where the earlier peak was made but there is no significant distribution price point other than 4.2 4.3 that is where we have somewhat large uh, transaction taking place again between this price point 3.94 to 4243 in this period there is very little transaction so if price breaks out i am expecting price to go to 4 to 4.2 4.3 that price range so that was giving me uh, some more confidence that i am buying at a price point where large players are also accumulating the stock in terms of uh, us market ranking again the telecom services sector wise was also improving in that particular week rank improving from 6 to 2 in that particular week so that was also favoring taking a long position now singtel has a big revenue coming from mobile and if we look at the mobile telecom industry group also that was strong again this is based on us data but it was strong for a long time so it was giving confidence from mobile telecom industry ranking table as well. Now I looked at multiple uh, pieces of information. I compared the revenue EPS. It was not growing much. That may be because that may be the reason why the stock fell. As I mentioned, we are trying to buy blue chip companies when they fall. So not all the fundamentals will be great. And revenue EPS was not growing much. But it was paying, it is paying still a good dividend, 4.72%. Uh, it is not the biggest. Starhub and Mobile One were paying slightly more, but still it is reasonable dividend in current market. The PE ratio and EPS, they are comparable to its competitors. That's what I looked. So it is not too expensive compared to its competitors. The operating margin was very healthy you can say for 17.5 percent and it is always important to compare them to the peer and they were comparable to that of startup mobile one so operating margin indicates where manage whether management is able to generate profit from continuing operations and singtel is able to do that if we look how management is making use of the equity and asset it was actually poor compared to star hub and mobile one now if we look at debt equity ratio which shows whether a company is able to withstand a downturn we see its debt equity ratio is 0.74 which is less than one is very good and the competitors for both of them the ratio was higher than one so in terms of ability to withstand any downturn singtel was the strongest and for short term viability of the company quick ratio which calculates the liquid uh, liquid assets available to meet short term debt obligations that is quick ratio and current current ratio measures the ability the all asset to meet all the liabilities so quick ratio and current ratio both are in line with its competitors so we can see in terms of fundamentals some of the factors were better than competitor some were not not better worse than competitors but in terms of technical chart it seemed to me that singtel is at a better support level than mobile one and star hub and they all were in industry sector that came down and it seemed to me that they were about to bounce so i thought that may be a good point to initiate a long-term investment for singtel so i shared all this detail uh, to explain that what are the factors i am looking at to identify long-term investments again i will emphasize that for short-term swing trading these are not relevant because none of these factors change over a period of five days ten days or so and because our holding period for swing trade is about five seven days usually five days on average it is not essential in fact it will be detrimental if we start looking at all these factors for our swing trading i will not go through more detail of fundamentals today but let me show you one excel 
when you are looking for uh, fundamental the fundamentally strong companies for long term investment if there are only three companies you may do the analysis easily if there are many more companies for example in this excel uh, i downloaded all the biotech companies in us or all in us because biotech groups have been uh, beaten down they are very much at low price point and then i was trying to look for possible good long term opportunities so i downloaded them in an excel with the data that is relevant and let me highlight this price earning ratio and price earning relative to industry price earning relative to sector we always need to compare pe with pr groups which is in this vertical column and with sector and industry to see whether they are expensive or cheap or reasonably priced now eps growth and revenue growth over 5 years they show the long term strength of the company operating margin shows whether the company is running profitably roe and roa return on equity and return on asset they show whether management is able to use the total asset or capital available to them efficiently and there are few more factors i consider let me scroll to the right quick ratio shows whether there is any immediate risk of insolvency and together current ratio and quick ratio shows whether is company is able to meet its debt obligation and debt equity ratio shows whether the company is uh, having reasonable debt relative to equity now when i did this analysis on the biotech companies one company came to my view and you will see it is immediately popping up to you also probably this company insight we are not interested so much to on the stock price but if you see the pe ratio it is the highest and uh, higher by a big margin compared to all the others which are generating some profit for number of biotech companies there is no pe ratio because probably they are not generating any earning at all but for the ones very few that are generating earning insight had a very very large pe ratio and relative to industry it was 10 fold relative to sector it was 15 or 16 fold so insight was very highly priced and then i looked at the insight chart now if it is a very highly priced of course i am not going to look for long term investment in that stock that is not superior profit way this is the at a glance template so if i am looking for long term investment in insight i will look for it at that at this price range around 60 when it came down we i am not going to look for long term investment in insight when it is at 150 or so now what happened on insight on this day maybe after market hours uh, one of its drugs got disapproved and it is fail and that time i shared a post in the community and told that to me it looks like insight will fall more and i said either it may fall from the current price level or even if it tries to goes up it may bounce down from the declining yellow direction line or if not that maybe from the memory resistance that was a post i shared in the community it was partly based on the technical because the stock was in downtrend lower high lower low but also partly based on the fundamentals that i saw that is extremely highly priced and this one day's drop was not enough to remove the expensiveness of the company that is what i thought and so far that analysis also working out well by the way if after a drop you have strong reason to think that it is dropping again it is not a standard q setup but it may be traded with options with small capital or stock also but if you are using stock then the stop loss will not be above recent high that is typical for other swing trade shorts here the stop loss should be just above the gap so if i move to hop off template here also if the stop will be very far away at this price level and that is also very far away so uh, if we are taking a short trade in this case 
we may put the stop initially at the point decided by Q protection, but watch the stock if price closes closes above this high, then we may exit the trend. The initial stop with GTC order stop will be at this price point, but if price went up and closed above this level, slightly above this gap high, then we might close the trade. That is one non-standard way of trading a gap. If you have significant reason to think that price will fall down but i usually suggest not to take a short or long trade just after a gap usually stocks tend to move in the direction uh, of filling the gap for a while at least before uh, reversing again so i i will not suggest taking a short trade in inside uh, after the gap unless you did some also fundamental analysis and had some reason to believe that it will fall more. So those were the points I uh, planned to discuss in this class and there were few stocks to look at. Let's look at them now. Uh, let's look at PHM. This is one of the home construction companies. Let's move to advanced hop on template so you can see the watermark level. And I observed that on Thursday, a PHM, Pulte Group, home, home construction company, it had a very nice reversal candle where price tried to go up above the watermark level, which was created by a bearish headwind, and price fell strongly. Because price fell a lot with very high activity also, the stop loss will be far away. So we will not be entering a trade right at that point. Our expectation will be maybe price come back up again and tilts down. That will give a possible low risk entry point. So we can look at home construction companies like this and look for short opportunities. This is an industry group which was strong but turning weak now. Now some tobacco companies. In a, what, what was the tobacco company you wanted to look at? Philip Morris and Rai. Weekly candle had a very bearish move. Okay, weekly candle, we can see there was earnings announcement. Then it had a false downside breakout with a bear release. In the daily also, actually right before earnings day, it had a false downside breakout. Before earnings, we don't like to take a trade, not using stock at least. If somebody wants to trade with a options then looking at industry analysis and at the fake downside breakout one could take a small amount probably not the usual capital but small capital could be a risk on a bearish trade looking at the false downside false upside breakout and bear release anyway at the right edge price has fallen and right uh, now it is at the ascending yellow direction line also at lower boundary so we will not enter any trade right now on the bearish side. Of course not on the bullish side also. The expected trade will be if it comes up little bit, tilts down, tilts down giving us a go with flow short trade opportunity. Then let's look at some the stock that I think Sean wanted to look at. GM. GM. Let's look at uh, the auto, auto industry group for a minute. Automobile and parts. Uh, as we saw the five days and ten days are showing some flip-flop. So if we look at the monthly period It is bearish Let's look at other auto groups auto manufacturing automobiles okay. Automobiles is bearish for a significant period of time both on monthly analysis and last five day ten days So both of them seem to be bearish at least on a monthly interval point of view so let's look at GM now. It is indeed bearish. So if we were following the industry group analysis, probably we are short already at this point, which would be a valid go with flow short candidate. This was a beautiful point where we already had a lower high and a lower low. Oh, it was at right at value area with reasonable risk to reward ratio. So that was a good good and ideal looking go with flow short setup this magenta color candle will not take any short neither will we take on this candle because the reward risk ratio was not attractive 
at the right edge of the chart it is still in downtrend if next week it tilts down it may give us a go with flow short candidate again and we may take a short trade it may be entered at end of day or if somebody is looking at real time data using fine tune template uh, tomorrow or maybe uh, on monday monday tuesday if price creates an early range and breaks down below it and if few other auto companies are also going down at the same time then we have support from the industry weakness also one might consider taking a short trade right now at the right edge there is no q trade signal on general motors we may look at some other company let's look at ford is also bearish in downtrend in weekly it is resting at memory support level which is also the watermark low level and price likely went up from there at the right edge there is no trade setup uh, candle color flow color is bullish but it is in downtrend so we are not going to consider taking any trade if price goes to the yellow descending direction line that will be around 11.8 and probably that is the time it will hit the memory resistance in weekly if it tilts down from there it may give us a valid go with flow short trade opportunity we may look for that right now there is no trade on the right hand, right right edge of the chart i think those were the uh, only stocks that were mentioned in the una panel that is all i plan to share for this week it's always pleasure to be with you in this class thanks for joining and i look forward to seeing you again in our next session have a great week thank you